hello, hello, people. Merry Christmas, everybody. People, you know what we have as well? We got a coffee machine. If we have a coffee machine, I get coffee on stream for the first time because I got we got a coffee machine. How about that, people? This is absolutely insane. We got coffee for the first time. I'm gonna be streaming and drinking coffee at the same time. I don't do it. Um, I got the coffee machine. I got it. I got it for for the family, which was they were very happy. Well, my mom doesn't really drink a lot of coffee, but my dad does, and he was very happy. And speaking of that, at 5 p.m., everybody, my mom is gonna join. She's gonna be, she's gonna come here to the stream and she's gonna be with us and we're gonna be doing some stuff together. She's gonna be showing us one of her favorite games uh, and analyzing it and we'll all be looking at that together, which will be really fun. So, um, what are you gonna be doing? I'm going to show um, some of my games. I will yeah? show, in general, it's one game, but a little bit more also. And it's, um, it's a game which is connected to Christmas because in Sweden we have a, a one of us, uh, our most uh, well-known tournaments is the Rilton Cup held in Stockholm. And actually this year it was going to be 50 year. So it's a long time running tournament. And this yeah. tournament is always held the same days between 27th of December until 5th of January. And um, the first time I went to the tournament, I was actually not playing because I was just 13 years yeah. old. I think I told you before, but I, I wanted so much to play, but my brother, I think my brother Don, who is four years older, I think he was playing, he, he was playing in the Junior European Championship in Holland. So I didn't dare to play. So I, I went to the playing hall, it was a school, yes, very, more almost in the center of Stockholm, Kullskola. And I went there every day to watch. And it was so much, uh, you know, the atmosphere, to see the players. It was the Italian, Mariotti who won. But I went there every day and I was so fascinated and I thought next year I will play. And after I played the next year and I played more than 20 times during the Christmas. Oh, for people who don't know, Rilton, <laughs> uh, the tournament that, that, uh, that she's talking about, is the biggest international tournament in, in Sweden. So it's a tournament organized every Christmas uh, in Stockholm. So that's that's basically what we what we have what we're talking about, and that was the first tournament that I ever commentated. That's how I started getting into this whole commentary streaming sort of thing. Because before I only played competitive chess, I didn't really commentate or anything. But Rilton Cup was the first uh, the first tournament that I commentated. So that's the tournament that we're talking about. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, so it's, the, it's, it's the biggest um, open tournament. Open you, tournament. You can do, okay, you have different classes, but it's not the biggest closed tournament. Okay. Not the strongest closed tournament. But it's really, a, and Rilton, it was, it was, an, it was a man who, who sent, a, who sponsored the tournament. And he made, when he died, he made the foundation. And it goes, one part of it goes to, to this tournament. So this is why it's named Rilton after uh, Tobre Rilton was yeah, his name. So, after Tobre Rilton. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, I thought it was nice to take something from this tournament. So I will choose, uh, I have chosen one of my games. Yeah. And let's, let's, I don't know, shall we start? Who are it? you playing as? Then I can set it up here. Uh, yeah, I am, I am black. Yeah. So white is Mikhail Olibin. He's a grandmaster from Russia. And he, together with his friend um, Evgeny Gleiserov, they came many times to play in Rilton, to play in other tournaments in Sweden. And this game was played in 90, 2005. So it's already 2005 in January. It was the third, it was, I think it was the seventh round. And I was black. And he was rated 2550 when we played. I was around 2500. I don't remember exactly my rating. But okay, so let's go. He played E4. Yeah. E4 and I played C5. I've been playing this so long time C5, so I, I almost, you know, I make this automatical and now after night of three I start thinking of oh, what I want to do. <laughs> but it's That's just like me, I play C5 always as well. I've chat, a lot of the openings that I play I've gone from my mom. Um, so I play a lot of the same things as my mom. So that's where I got all my openings from. I know a lot of you ask where I get my openings from. That's where I get them from. Mm, so, so this yes. is, yeah, this is silly. And now I played E6. This is what I used to play at that time. E6, D4. He played an open Sicilian. I took, and he took with the knight. I played knight C6. And now we have a time on of Knight C3 is the main move. You go up, out with the knight. And I play Queen C7. And here white has lots of different plans. But he played f4. Hmm? f4. And now in this position, I had this position lots of times. 
and I sometimes I actually take an already on d4, but in this game I prefer to play a6. A6. And the idea with a6 or 2 1 is that sometimes knight b5 can be very annoying. Or the so knight, it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one or the knight. It can be annoying. Yeah. So you need to, to, to avoid it. But you're also planning to go b5 and to put up the bishop on b7. So this is the idea. So, and you play knight b3 here. And this is a little bit of a funny move because you go away with a knight to a more passive square and you do it by yourself. Because there is a line where black go queen b6, you threaten the knight, and then the white has to go away, and then you go back to queen c7. But now we have the same position, but I have a move extra. So mm. th this is not critical. But I've seen again that now there are uh, becoming popular in some different position to play this knight be free, just to have uh, this kind of setups. Yeah. So 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 okay. So he played knight b3, and I was happy because this was I was was one of the things I was hoping he was going to play. So I played b5. How you prepare? How you prepared all of this? Uh, I, yes, I prepared this. He played bishop d3 because I knew this could be. Now I played uh, d6, and now you can see with the bishop and d3 why he wanted to go away. Now he played bishop e3. E3 the other bishop out. I went knight f6. And wait a second, if, yeah, they're asking in the chat if knight b5 is possible before, but I guess that uh, knight b5 before is, do you no, want to look at uh, that? Yeah, we can, absolutely. Before uh, you go a6, maybe uh, that should absolutely. be, you know, we can after go, queen c7. Uh, can, I can tell something here. In this position, if yeah. you want to have my setups, you can do queen c7 directly, and you, you can go a6. And if you go a6 here, the most popular is to take on c6. I just want to show this. Uh, if you go a6, you take, the most popular, but you can play a different way, is to take on c6 b take you don't and bishop d3 and now and then you see now i made this a6 move and i would prefer to have this position with queen c7 so uh, so this is why it's the move orders are a little bit it's quite interesting how you decide but go back so this is one reason why some people prefer like me many times i go queen c7 first here you can go knight b5 and this is probably with a d knight and then i go queen b8 but whatever you do now, my next move will be a6, and you will have to go back again. Yeah. So the only because there isn't this check. Here. There is not this check. That's if you had some bishop before, this could be very annoying. But, yeah. But for example, if you go g3 here, I will just just show it g3. I have a6, and there is uh, there is no time for bishop f4 because I have e5 and I win a piece. So so you don't have you don't have. Oh, this. we win we win this knight uh, here when the bishop moves. Mm. Exactly. So, so, but, uh, but you can actually, uh, actually, you can go knight b5, and when I threaten a6, you can go a4. This you can play a4 here. Yes, the queen will be a4. And oh, now, sorry, instead of g3. Yes, a4. I guess. And when if if black goes a6, you go knight a3, and the idea is to put a knight on c4, and you try to you look at the square on b6. So, so it's it's a it's a way of playing, but it's not so common to to play like this. I, I I I think I met it some few times during all the years I've been playing, so so it's not very common, but but it's absolutely possible. And the idea is knight c4, a5, and you have this hole on b6, and you're also looking at the pawn on d6. Hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and go to the actual position. Was it after bishop e3? Yeah, bishop e3, and now I play knight f6. So knight f6. Yeah. Yeah. And then he played queen f3. So, and this is also a very common setup. I, now I went bishop b7 because you see the queen is looking down here. So bishop b7. This could be an idea here. Yeah. yeah. So this is it's normal to have the bishop here. So I play bishop b7. So, so okay. This is a common position. The knight could be in d4. And here white has different plans. It could be long castling. You could start with g4 to try to make this uh, palm stones. And you can go what he did. Also, you can go with short castling. This is what he played. Mm. Yeah, it looks a bit scary to go long castle in g4, g5. That's always what I'm scared about in these type of positions. Yeah, this is very popular to, to play because it's, you know, it's very... Everyone likes to attack, you know? Yeah, everyone likes, likes to, to attack, attack, of course. So, and then after you go king b1, so if black tries knight before and take on d3, you normally want to take with the pawn. And then actually afterwards with the king on b1, you can play rook c1 and even play on the seed line. Yeah. So, so it's, 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 it's another idea. And black is trying to get in, sometimes to get in d5 or e5 in good conditions. And that's why you want the bishop to be on b7, yeah. So, but he played, he played castling. Okay. Short castling. And so I had prepared this. 
And I have decided that if I get this position, I wanted to play my next move. And my next move was, the most common here now is to go bishop e7 and then short castling. But I knew this is what he wanted to play. What me, he wanted me to play was he, he was going to go g4, g5, and he was going to have this pawn storm, even if he had a king on the short oh, side. Oh, so you can even play g4, g5 and start attacking with the king here. Yeah, yeah, of course it's you can. Okay, yeah. This is very common to do. It's, 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 it's also common to have with the king here because the king is quite safe. Even 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 on the king side, hmm. so so it's it's possible. But he, you know, so I knew he, this was his plan, and I wanted to play against his plan. So I played h five. No, h five to stop g four, everybody. No g four <laughs> happening here. We're not allowing it here. So I played h five, and this was, you know, this game is played two thousand five. I played this h five idea in different similar uh, Sicilian position. And the idea is that I will, my king will remain still in the middle of the board Ooh. Uh, it, it, for some time. Ooh. I will yeah. not, I will not cast on long side. But there is possibility that I, after bishop e7, maybe I put the pawn on h4, can even go short castling. But I need to keep an eye on my pawn. But but I am stopping, stopping black, white from playing g4. And one idea is now we play king h1. And in general, because now my uh, the idea is that if I go knight g4, he has bishop g1. But if you go back, I just want to, because normally, let's say go back, let's say, and because sometimes knight g4 can be annoying, and then after queen b6 check, you have this diagonal. Oh yeah, if, so knight g4, and then if the bishop moves somewhere, you have this check. Sometimes this can be annoying. Now you have both yeah. rook and queen defending on f2, but, but it can be annoying. Another way to stop it is, is with h3. But if you go h3, which I think is more common here, then black idea would be to go bishop b7, and then h4. So there will, and then I have this idea, knight h5, knight g3. Ooh, whoops. Uh, wait, wait, wait. This was just so beautiful be besides uh, my arrows. Uh, there we go. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> look at this square for the knight, everybody. Beautiful square. Uh, so, so, and it's again, I'm stopping this g4. Of course, you know, you don't want to go g4 with the rook on h, uh, h8. It would open the g5. But, but it's, so I'm playing very actively against his idea. And I try to find a, do you call it maybe hook, you know, on g3, a hole on g3 I can work on. That's actually a question in the chat. That's great. Yeah, what happens after f5? I will go knight d5 and I get knight this five, one default yes. square for the knight on e5. And then if later on knight d4 comes, I will defend e6 with maybe queen d7. So it's, it's you don't really want to go, but f5, not, not, not. No, no, not yet at least. Uh, All right, awesome. But no, that's actually like a really typical thing that whenever there is f4, I mean, f5 always looks nice, but then, you, you know, you realize that, okay, if black faces knight on e5, there's no pawn that can kick the knight away. So the knight is going to have a beautiful square there Yeah, the knight five. gets a tremendous square. Yes. And then you can see that with the knight on d4, if you go f5, at least you are threatened to take it. Now you will need to, if I go knight d5, white will try to go knight d4 back. To start attacking Should it, attack this yeah, here. but you need you're losing time with it also. So in general, it's it's to black's advantage that that white has played his knight free, and especially white has played it by himself without mm. me giving up the tempo for it. So mm. so what he did, he was king h1. But there is also another disadvantage. We go with the king on h1. You see my rook on h8. He's putting the same. It's on the same line. But wow! And Ooh. see my bishop on b7. He's also looking at f3. Is this giving us some hints on what is going to happen? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Look at this time. We're getting some hints here. <laughs> what Beautiful. Be? So 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 it's <laughs> so I, I guess the better way to avoid knight g4 is probably h3. That with the bishop on b7, you probably prefer to have the king on on the black square. You so understand? here going h3. Yeah, I guess going h3 is, is, a, is a more wiser. And then either, I, I guess I would have gone bishop e7 with plan on h4. Yeah, yeah and this yeah. is the plan we're talking about. Okay, um, so, beautiful. So, so, so king h1. Mm, king h1. And now I play bishop uh, e7. And then after, it was like uh, he wanted to... Uh, it's an open tournament. You need to play for a win. And he liked to push. And he saw he cannot play on the king side. So now he started to play on the queen side. He made a4. But I think a4 is not such a good move uh, here. So uh, I played a uh, b4. 
this is you know i cannot take if i take you know if i, if I would take he would I, I guess he will maybe he will take with a knight but you have this knight b6 and you have idea maybe yeah so this far. looks really really dangerous and oh. also you cannot just stay here because white is threatening to take the no i need to do something so b4 is normal now he went knight d1 and if you go knight d2 i would play the same like in the game let's say i, I just want to show you if you go knight d2 in the game i play d5 but I just want to show in the game uh, d5. Play d5. Yes, and I want to show yeah d5 because here if you go now you because normally now I go d5. I want to take on e4 and I want to take. I want him to take with the bishop so I will have the bishop pair and I will open for my you see my bishop on b7. Boop, 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 boop. So and if he now goes knight g3, it's not a good square because I can kick him with h4. So you see another a and then he needs to go back. I have and then I have h3 open you know, the diagonal, and I will also take an e4. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So so this is why when I keep him, he kicked him with b4, he need to go knight 1 Knight d2 was really not an, an idea. And I went d5, and this is very typical, in, because I play kind of hedgehog, the only pawn, okay, now I got b5 in, so it was on the fifth square, and I got h5 in, but normally I'm playing with my pawns very, you know, not far away. And so when you get the chance to make a break, I have got the chance to make b5, I decided to play this h5, which was quite modern at this time. And now I can play d5, and I can do it exactly because I kicked away his knight. With the knight on d5 and c3, I wouldn't like to do it. And when you have a chance to play uh, d5 uh, in many openings with black, uh, you really want to do it because you take squares in the center yeah. and it's normally it's a way of equalizing. Yeah, especially in Sicilian. Yeah, especially in the Sicilian. Um, this is especially in Sicilian. It could so, be d5, sometimes yeah. it could be e5 and it's about these four very important squares. You know, e4, e5, d4, d5. They are the main squares. The brief. main central squares. Mm -hmm. And now he, now he play knight f2. And I always want to show if you go e5, e5 could be well, something, but then I go knight Ooh, that g4. That looks dangerous. I go knight g4. Yeah. You want to keep the bishop, bishop g5, and you know what you do here? Bishop g1. You need, you need. Oh, bishop g1. g1. Yeah. You go g5. G5 in this position, ladies and gentlemen. Look and at the that. idea is, if you go h3, yeah. I, I yes, I yes. Because uh, well, the main idea is that if takes, there's going to be takes here, right? Yes. Yeah. And after you will take on, on you will take on g5, or you take back and then I take e5. You cannot yeah. defend it. Exactly. And if you go h3. I just want to show you just take on f4 because now you cannot take my knight because of the queen because of the boom this and you see the, his whole center is falling apart and if i need safety i can actually cast alongside here uh, I, I can actually do that hmm. so so it, it's uh, so this is why e5 is not and this g5 is also a common motive, motive in in the sicilian when you play yeah yeah definitely form. definitely mm -hmm. that's so nice that's such a nice move g5 there that's such a nice move it's just a shocking move yeah <laughs> so, so let's go back there so after d5 he played a uh, knight f2 i took an e4 yeah and now you're breaking this whoops sorry now you're breaking the center he just like you wanted to oh uh, he took on with a knight and i took and now you took here. It, yeah. And now the normal is to take with the bishop. But I will tell you, he didn't do that. I will tell you what happened. This, this is normal to take with the bishop. Yeah, it looks really scary to take with the queen and allowing this yeah. whole bishop. Yeah. But I, I will show his idea. Yes, exactly. Did he take with the queen? Yes. Yeah. Can I ask you what happened if he takes with the bishop? Is yeah, okay? of course. Of because course. this is normal. I would go f5. And then because I will, I want to take his bishop. He doesn't want to take his c6. And if you go bishop d3, I will show you. Why does he not want to take on c6? I will take with the bishop. And after, let's say, queen g3, I will just go uh, here, I will uh, I will just go king f7. And after that, my next move is h4, h3. This is threatening. Or rook h6 and rook g6. Is Ooh, stronger. bringing the rooks in! Look at this king being super safe on, on f7 without castling in the whole game. Yeah, and you can see something which is quite important. When you play with bishops on the board, now we see that black, L white has the black square bishop. I like my king to be in white. My king is very safe on f7, only if the knight could come to e5, but it's so far away from that. And then, uh, so, yeah, so it, it, it's, it's very far away to come to, 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 to e5, so it's very safe there. And for example, in the last move, if you go some bishop d4, I can go bishop f6, and if he takes, I take with the g-pawn and you get <laughs> <laughs> yep, takes, takes, work here, and boom, there we go. Yeah, so <laughs> let's go back. So I will show. So after, what happened if he's done? If he done? 
Yeah, after f5, he moves his bishop back. Yeah, to d3. Yes, I go knight d5. With knight the double e5. Back. Queen e2. Yeah. And I take on d3. He takes with the pawn. This is a very good move. And now I go h4. I want to go h3. He go h3. And in this position, it's about equal. I have face again g2, but the open c line will give white counterplay. Yeah. Will give because I have only g2 is very um, very weak but normally you need to have more than one weakness to play again so this is about equal this position so he should have gone for this but he was very ambitious and he had another plan so let's go back to yeah that. also this pawn feels a bit more unsafe now than in the other variation yeah, there but might be maybe bishop d5 yeah i will go i will go point. bishop d5 here. yeah i will go bishop d5 comes rook c1 and then so e6 will be okay i will put my king on f7 but there will be you know chances for both I, uh, absolutely it's, it's it's just unclear this position but he made he took with the queen so i made knight a5 open for me yeah he played queen d4 just like this queen is doesn't have a lot of squares yeah i took on b3 he took back with the pawn and now in this position because i cannot go bishop f6 he will take my pawn on b4 also avoiding me from castling i can go castling but i played another move and I played rook d8, and I was very happy about this move. And I will later tell you how I decided to play the no. And then, of course, you go rook d8. You can see white has, you can go queen c4, but then we go into an, an, an ending. I change, he take with the bishop. I go h4, you know, he has to go h3. h3 is very threat, big threat. And the h3 for white, and I go rook h5, and my rook is entering this way. And this is a little more pleasant for me. Maybe I will go g5 again. Maybe g5. Maybe I will just try to put pressure uh, different ways. But 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 this is fine. Uh, so maybe I go even rook f5 sometimes. So so it could be. Uh, so depends a little bit of the position. But maybe maybe g5 is what I want to do. So so but the rook is entering also on this side. So it's it's I think it's a little more pleasant for me. But this is what he should have done. He should have gone for Nengis. But but normally when you have a plan, you follow your plan. And of course, Rook D8, you see the pawn is hanging on G7. So he took the pawn. And this is of course This looks so scary. <laughs> this looks so, so scary. scary. Chat. Queen takes G7. Yeah. And now this is what I had planned because I have seen a tactical motives. And uh, so here in this position, I was so happy. I got to play it. So happy. So here I play bishop f6, and now he was thinking for an hour. For an hour! For an hour, for an hour, because, you know, because this is a, and this is why it's so good to make, um, when you make this tactical training, and then you, you, you make different motives, different patterns. Yeah. And if you haven't seen this pattern before, it's very difficult to find it. And I knew this pattern before. That's why I, I when I play rook date, I had planned this. But if I hadn't seen it before, I, I'm not sure I would have found it in the game. And he hadn't. So this was like a shocker for him. And he was thinking so long. But there is the only one move. You can only take the bishop. Yeah, can, but obviously, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that, that's so funny, actually. There's only one move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if you go queen d3, because I'm not only threatening the queen, I want to take the bishop and d3. So there's only one choice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but, but I like, so I like very much, yeah, he took the bishop, so let's see what happened. After an hour, I was so happy, I play rook g8, I, I, rook j8, and now you see, uh, <laughs> now did you see this bishop, how it's threatening, and it would, yeah, if, even with the king on g1, this would be very, very tough, but the king on h1 is not helping. And you can see that there is no time to save the bishop, because if you go like, let's say we go... Um, we say we go bishop e2 here. Yes, I, I just want to show the mate. Then I, I no, 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 I take bishop e2 check actually. King e1, and I go bishop f3. Oh, that's very nice. f3, yes, king f2. Oh, I see the mate, that's actually very nice. Yeah, yeah, so you Rook see it here. here, yes. And then if takes, we have checkmate. Oh, that, that's why you put the bishop on f3, because you can have rook e2 afterwards. So there's no, yeah. So there, there's, have this checkmate. Yeah. So there's no so so he had to defend yeah and and i will just show the end of the game he played rook g1 he defended on g2 and i took on d3 and now this is also very important he played bishop f2 
and I kicked him rook d2 because I'm not only threatening the bishop. There is on g2 after he go he has to go rook g3 because if he go queen f rook f1, I will go queen c6 and he cannot defend. No, no, not this. Then oh, right, rook. The other, yeah, because yeah. yeah. now he queen c6 and I will take on g2. So he had to go bishop g3. Mm, instead, instead he went bishop g3. Yeah, and what I want to say when you are uh, when you have a different color bishops and you have the heavy pieces like rook and queens, and you have a target like me, I have this g2, then it's very good. It's different color bishop because hmm. he cannot defend it with his bishop, but I can attack it with one more piece. So uh, when you have an initiative it, and you have the heavy pieces on, it can actually be an advantage to have different color bishops. I like this position. So it's, he's collapsing very quickly. And now what I did, I was happy with the next move. I thought it was just stronger to put a bishop before the queen. So I play bishop d5. If I go queen c6, he will go rook c1. It, it's still good. Queen d5, he go, he go queen e5. Yeah, he has to try to, 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 to change queen. So it was, it was stronger to put a bishop before. Mm -hmm. so, so this is why. Yeah, and then I guess that if it takes and you just... Here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I will take it. You take on GY, King takes. And, and if you take a bishop, I rook say it's a little bit careful. <laughs> Leo, I was gonna take with the bishop. No, take with the pawn. Otherwise, there's rook c8 winning, winning uh, rook there. Yeah, but you don't want to take with the pawn. So something has gone wrong here. We shouldn't allow this. In this such a beautiful position, yeah. we want this diagonal to be open. And it's, it's, it's just stronger to start with the bishop first. The, 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 because now I'm just threatening queen b7. I will keep my queen. I'm attacking g2. There is no back rank problem because with the queen on b7, I'm defending c8 if he goes rook c1. All your pieces are in such nice squares. They're yeah. like in the best square of the position. Even the king, there's not a single check here. Even no, the king is Even great. the king. And you see, again, my king is in a white square. So this is, this is just very good to have this routine to think of. Where is my king? And it's just very good on, on, on a white square. And it's very good on e8 because there are yeah. no back rank problems. So you play queen h4, you know, there's no, no, no. Queen h4. Uh, yes. And I play queen b7. And now it was like he was resigning because he played h3. It will be, yes. And I just took a g2 with a, yes. And it was made king h2 and bishop f1 and he resigned. So you saw how quickly it was, but go back. And if you play the normal move here, if you play queen h3, then I have h4 and it's overload because so, so yeah and, and this is there's just no hope for me I win the piece and and it's just over so but and uh, but it was because I I saw this tactical idea I, if he had seen it he would have gone he wouldn't have played queen take e4 so no. all his idea when he played queen, queen e4 he was looking uh, he was looking at his plan was to go queen d4 and take on g7 this was his plan. So all his uh, idea went wrong. And it was because he didn't know this pattern hmm. I got to play. So now I will show you another game, but very quickly, which yeah. has to do with this pattern. That's why I want to show it. But this is not played in real time, but I want to show it because, yeah. Was, was he a grandmaster? Yeah, he's a grandmaster. He's Ulibin, Mikhail Ulibin. He's from, uh, I don't know if he's from uh, Moscow or Leningrad, but he and mm. Genel Gleiserov, they were always coming together to Rilton lots of time. They came to Peter Lava's tournament and Östergaard also lots of time. And they always played uh, yeah, fighting games. And he was, you know, I think he's a player who's not making so many draws. He's winning or losing. It's, it's just his way of playing. What I, was his rating once again? He was 25.50. Yeah, and 25, I was 25. 50. I think I was 20, uh, around 25. I don't know if I was a little over or a little less. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But this is 15 years ago. And now we will go back. We will go back even longer. But the game has to, it's not from Rilton, but the game has to do with this with this game so let's, let's go, go ahead and put it up then from the beginning uh you will benjamin is white he's a grandmaster you from will? benjamin he's white he just became the veteran youth champion oh, this wait. year so he's i think he's one of few who has won the junior youth champion the normal youth champion and now also the veteran youth champion and um you will benjamin he's a grandmaster from the united uh, states yeah and, Good. I, and black was me. <laughs> and black was you. <laughs> yeah, it's another of my games. <laughs> so, and uh, yes, Pia. So, and this game was played uh, in Sweden. Uh, now I have to have, let me change it also. I am black. Yeah. It, but 
Uh, Sweden, we have a lot of chess tradition and Sweden used to be very strong in the 30s, 40s, 50s and the 60s and we had we had Olympia 37. I didn't know that. And it was held in Stockholm in Kungsträdgården. It's, it's fantastic. It was like 3,000 people coming and watching. And uh, we also had three very strong grandmasters. It was Gideon Stolberg, Gösta Stolz and Erik Lundin. And Erik Lundin, he died 89. He was, uh, he was born, I think he was born four, so he was like eight to five years old. And he has done very much for Swedish chess. Been a very strong player. He had uh, also a chess, uh, local chess, um, like a chess, I, I don't know if it was a coffee house, a chess place where they were playing uh, for Drottninggatan during many years. He was taking care of Tiske for Schack during many years. He was just a fantastic person for Swedish chess. And when he died, his club, which is Vasa Chess Club, where I, I actually, you also actually, we are playing now, yeah. but at the time we didn't do, they wanted to organize a tournament to remember him. And this tournament was held 1990. Unfortunately, they only made one time and they had 10 players. They invited, there were some Swedish players. Uh, one of them, I think, Ferran Hellish play, I guess, Lasse Carlsson play. Um, I don't know, Tom Wimber, I'm, I'm sure if he played. I, I was playing and they were also inviting, yeah, um, um, Richard Westman was playing and then Joel Benjamin was there, Fedorovic was there, I think Gausel from Norway was playing. So really, really strong players. It was a strong player, yeah. strong tournament. And there was a very young player, for me, completely unknown, but he was a rising star and his name was Alexei Shirov. <laughs> and he also came, he was... Uh, Shirov was there, people! <laughs> what year did you say exactly? So it was 79, did you say that? No, this tournament was uh, 90. Oh, 90, 90. I thought you were so young then, if it was 79. No, 90, 90. No, I wasn't so young, I was 27, but Shirov is born, I think he's born 72. So he was, he was 17 or he was 18, I think. And he was, so he came and he won the tournament very convincingly. Wow. Uh, but, uh, so let's show the game here first. We will start yep. and then I will, but this is a little bit of the background about the tournament where we play this. So it That's was a so grandmaster nice. tournament where you had the chance to make GM norms. I didn't make it. I don't, I don't know if anyone made a GM norm. I, I, I'm not <laughs> oh, sure. what a tournament. <laughs> yeah, but, but this is very typical because, oh, you, yeah. you know, you need no, probably you need to make seven out of nine points. Oh, yeah, yeah. So normally you need to win it. And Alexei, he won it with, with, with margin. I think he had at least one point more. But yeah. was Sheriff already a grandmaster then? No, he uh, no, he wasn't. And for me, he was very unknown. But he was the rising star. And after that, he made so many strong tournaments. And so many strong results. And what was funny, during the tournament, Alexei Shear asked me, Pia, why are you playing here? Why don't you go and play the candidate tournament for ladies, which was held at the same time in Georgia? But I told him that for me, the most important is to become grandmaster. So I didn't take part in that Women World Championship. Mm. And that candidate tournament was also historical because it was held in Georgia. And the favorites were the Georgian. Georgia has very long tradition of ladies chess. They have mm. they used to have this tradition that when a lady married, she always get a poetry, but she also get a chess set. But, oh, wow. uh, so, so yeah. chess in Georgia is very special, but uh, and then Alisa Marish and Chi Yun won, and this was actually the the start of the chess revolution in China. It started there at the same time. Oh wow! Because when she became world champion, after that China became very strong in lady chess, and later in the open class, they, they have won the Olympias. Mm. Both That's in, when they became really mm. strong. Yeah, but it took three for for chess. Yeah, yeah, but it took some time. But it started with Chi Yun, and it started when she qualified from the from the candidate in Georgia. That's all some parentheses. Let's go now to the game. So let's go. The game was a Sicilian. We will have the same opening like before. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. E four. E four. C five. Whoops. Not B five. C five. No, no, not B five. Knight F three. I at that time E six. Yeah. D four. I took. Uh, he took, I play knight c6, we have this time on it, knight c3, uh, knight c3, I play queen c7, you see it's the same. Same opening as he last played time. played f4, but this, but this game is played 15 years before the other one, so it, it's like 30 years back. This is a long time ago. 30 it, years back, back, yeah. And now at that game, I took on d4, and it's possible that Michael Oliven was expecting this. He took back, I played a, a6, mm, you know, to avoid b5, he played bishop d3. 
Yes, I'll ask that later, Miguel. I, I played B5. Mm. B5. Yeah. Mm. I was looking at it. Yeah, because that castle is not possible because of Bishop. We should see that. No, 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 of course. You have the castle. Yeah. So he played A3. Yes, I played Bishop B7. And he played B4. This is a little bit of funny move. And now when he had played uh, B4, I played, I played, but it's to avoid bishops is fine. So now I made bishop e7, and the point is you cannot take on g7, high bishop f6, and knight c3 is falling. So, yeah, so, the bishop. so he played castling, and uh, the idea is that uh, uh, that if I go bishop f6, you have uh, e5. No? Then I play queen c6. So it's a little bit this. Uh, I play queen c, and the idea is now I want to go bishop f6. If you go e5, I have a mate on g2. <laughs> so it's a bit, <laughs> but it's also to put the queen on this diagonal. And I have also opened up maybe for bishop d8, bishop b6. Could be also. Hmm. Ooh. So, it could also be. So he played queen f3. So he played queen. rook, no, rook f3. Yeah. And now I played knight f6. Actually, yeah, like this, and there is this. So yeah, knight f6. Knight f6. He, yeah. played, he played a4. And now, because it is a little bit similar like that again, he played a4. Hmm? Oh, no, a4. a4. Oops, sorry, Not sorry, a4, sorry. A4. Sorry, so sorry, sorry. I took. Let me just go ahead and promote this. You mm -hmm. took. And now he should took back with a rook. Because here I couldn't go b4. He has stopped it. But he didn't take with a rook. He took with a knight. And so it means that the pawn on e4. It's just hanging. And many times when you can take a pawn in the center, even if you lose the pawn on the side, normally the pawn in the center is more important. So I took an e4 and now, now I also will open my the, the diagonal. The beautiful diagonal. Yeah, we remember from last time. He took an e4. Yep. I took back on e4 and he took on g7. And this is a little bit, you remember, it's similar to before. We got the idea once again, chat. Yeah, you know, in this game, I play rook f8. I will just show very shortly what happened. I, I play rook f8 in the game. He played bishop b2, but he should go c3. He need to defend his pawn, bishop b2. I play rook b... I took bishop take b4, I think, here. So you didn't... No. I took bishop here. Bishop before, rook, that makes sense. Rook, yes, rook b3. And then, uh, I don't know if I need to show more. He went rook b3, I went bishop d6, and then after I, w I won this position. He went maybe bishop a3, and later on I won. But I could play stronger before. Yeah. So, and I won because he didn't play the best. Uh, this is fine for me now. I go rook c8 and it's good. But go back. This looks very comfortable. Yeah, but go back. What I wanted to show is, in this position, after bishop d7, after the game, after Queen takes G7, yeah, after Queen takes G7, after the game, she she was playing against. Uh, I, when I finished, I was going up, and she was sitting on the side. He was playing against Ferdinand Hellish, and I didn't know in so while, but he leaned over and he told me, he asked me, Pia, why didn't you play? And what did he say? Why, why, why didn't the, you play in this position? Oh. I, when I played Rook he said, Why didn't you play? And what was his suggestion? Chat, what do you think it was? <laughs> thinking about the last game. What do you think it was? Yeah. <laughs> <Of course>. So, <laughs> Bishop F6. F6. There we have it. Bishop yes, F6. F6. So, yeah, so I, this is what he played. So, I play. So, he wanted. So, can we go Bishop F6? Let's do take, it. And uh, you take. And you go Rook G8. And again, there's no good defense. You cannot move the Rook because there will. If you go Rook G3, I have Queen E1 made. Or I can take on g3 also, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. And if you go queen c3, I will show you, queen c3, I go rook c8 first, I'm kicking the queen. You move the queen or, or knight c5, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can go knight c5, I go queen take f3 and I win an exchange. Yeah, that's and you true. Do. And you have to take, you have to take back g3 and I go d6. And if you take on a6, I go, I just rook take c2 and this is just This dramatic. just looks so good. So good. But he saw it immediately. And I, you know, I didn't look at this uh, bishop f6, but because Alexei told me that, I, I remember this pattern. And this is why it, it was easy for me to find it after 15 years. Yeah. And that's why I was so happy that I, after such a long time, I had a chance to play it when I missed this in this game. Hmm. That's so cool how, you know, how one game which you really remember, especially because Shirov said this. Yeah. Just makes you 15 years later remember the exact same pattern. Mm. So 
yeah, yeah. So that's, that's why, so cool. Yeah, that, that's why I thought it was so so nice. So, and that's why I I I, I don't know if Alexei had seen it before or he's just such a creative player that he find it. But I hadn't seen it, and yeah, so so, so that is, because that would have finished the game directly. The way I played, it was it was unclear, but he went wrong and I won the game. Yeah. It's well, so, I think that, yeah. yeah that's all. Okay, it is fine. So, well, thank you. thank you for being here. Let's always. Wait. All right, well, no, I'm not gonna. I was gonna put the hat on you. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Mom. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Have a great. Well, what, what do you mean? Have a great day. I'm gonna see you in a couple of hours. Merry Christmas from me and my mom once again. Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>